Zawa is ready. Hmm. So the dwarves of Durgan's battery did not destroy themselves after all. They fell to invaders. We have discovered things thought to be lost. Their influence may yet persist. But we have seen no invaders, and the battery was shut. Did they come only to destroy the dwarves, and then leave? Yes. A hopeless battle was waged in Durgan's battery. They seemed to know that their deaths had come, yet many fought on. <sighs> their bravery was not enough in the end. They might have made great Nalpazka warriors, if only they had been born to Khan. Zawa is ready. What do you need of Zawa? The ways of the Nalpazka can make little sense to an outsider. We are the warriors of the Takan. Nobles, peasants, it does not matter. We are souls caged in flesh, nothing more. But it is one thing to say it, another to know it. So we train until we know it, or until we meet our ends. I give this answer because it is what you wanted. But the Nalpazka would say different. They would say that we are nothing at all. Perfection. Look around you. The world is perfect. Every being, every moment, every death. Rarely do we see this. We stumble through life, lost in distractions. Every practice of the Nalpazka is a reminder to stop stumbling, to know the perfection. You think the world imperfect? Most would agree. Most would say the world is imperfect because we suffer. They imagine a world without suffering and dream of living there and suffer all the more for it. This is their mistake. The world is perfect. It was created by a boundless wisdom. It is for us to learn why a perfect world requires that we suffer. Vanity is a snare that roots us to the ground. The way we see ourselves, the way others see us, these things are not real. They cannot be touched. The Nalpazka teachings reveal many such snares. Fear, pleasure, doubt. Hatred. They hold us back if we let ourselves be caught. Then you see only what is truly there, and you suffer no longer. You become as a god, seeing things as they do. If you can loose yourself from the snares, then you are free. I meet people on the road, and they pity me. I have come to find it endearing. They see so many scars, and they wonder, how can the man beneath not be broken? A scar is a wound that heals, a living reminder of our power over suffering. They cause no pain, only the echo of pain, which cannot hurt you. Show me a scarred man, and I will show you a man who can overcome. The Malkachor? At any time, it is rare that I have not eaten some. When you first try it, it seems a beautiful fantasy. You see colors you have never seen. Meet creatures that are not there. With practice, you see that all it does is show you reality. The essence of all things. How they are alike and connected. I have watched trees grow and wilt before me. I have tasted meat and known the animal's life as if it were mine. But the Malkachoa often causes the stomach to empty with great violence, so it is not for everyone. If I did not suffer, I would not aspire to free myself from it. I would wander from one unfulfilling goal to the next, more wealth, 
a better station, my soul would wither. But to search for a place beyond suffering's reach is to nurture the soul, to harden it against the elements. Suffering is the greatest gift the gods have given us, the most beautiful, perfect creation. It is the hand that turns the wheel. Zawa is ready. What do you need of Zawa? Most Takan have two choices. They can grow crops, or they can become Nalpazka warriors. I was the youngest of five. A dreamer. The Nalpazka were always in my thoughts. They did not feel the same about me. Three times I tried to join their ranks. Three times I was refused. All that time spent dreaming, and I had not thought to prepare. <laughs> I was lazy, uncoordinated, overweight. <laughs> if they had not refused me, what shame I might have brought to them. They had no choice. Our high priestess had a vision. Malkachoa, plus some other shit, knowing her. <sighs> no one put on a better ceremony than she did. She saw me as chieftain leading a host of Nalpazka warriors to victory over our enemies, the Ketchmatl. Our last chieftain had died over the winter. A new one had not yet arisen from the Nalpazka. So the timing was right. The next day they brought me before Ishipilo, the great master of the Nalpazka, and I became his pupil. I still trained with the other instructors, sparred and meditated with my Nalpazka brothers and sisters. I learned from all of them, but learning from Ishipilo was a chieftain's privilege. He knew the secrets that could grant mastery over reality, invincibility in combat. When an Alpasca was deemed a worthy successor to a chieftain, greater than all his peers, Ishipilo would take him in, prepare him for the future. I would not be as I am now without his lessons. Not all of them. A story for another time, perhaps. One thing he did teach me was that the more you talk, the less you hear. And the less you hear, the less you have that is worth saying. Ishamidl is vast. Outsiders think of it as one land and its people as one people. But if you walk across it, you see that there are many Ishamidls. The Ishimital that the Khan know is rich in soil and water. The crops seem to grow in front of you. We build our homes along the Aki River, and it is good to us. Though every so often it floods, so that the Khan do not forget their suffering. It would not be the rainy season without my neighbor Esli swimming after his escaped goats and nearly drowning. But home is an idea. No more real than justice or honor. My home is here now. Wherever I stand, I hope to share knowledge with the monks of the Thousand Dreams. Their monastery lies east of here. They are said to be seekers of greater truth, like the Nalpazka. But if they still exist, I did not find them there. Zawa is ready. What do you need of Zawa? Zawa. 